Hello there, thanks for stopping by and welcome to messing about with an arrow boat and if you're new here thanks very much for joining, much appreciated. Uh, we are Colin and Roma, Roma works full time so she comes down about once a week on her day off. About a year ago we commissioned a custom build brand new sail away narrow boat so it came with a shell uh, it was uh, primed foam, foam lined and an engine put in and we are spending the next year or so fitting it out for convenience we're on hard standing uh, it's just so much easier than trying to do all of this in the water uh, plus it means we don't have to pay the license fee <laughs> mind you what we pay on uh, hard standing fees cancels out the license fee cost parked next to the main or one of the main UK railway lines out of London so every few minutes a train goes past so uh, you'll hear that a lot and we're in a very busy uh, boatyard there's not many people doing fit outs but the boatyard is seriously busy with people coming in for like, minor repairs and welding but mostly blacking it's just a constant, I'm watching one now on the crane coming in. It's been a case of this morning, one in and one out, ready for its blacking. So in this episode, it's time to start painting the boat. Uh, the fair bit of prep to do, which I'll, I'll take us through, and then we can crack on with, with actually physically painting the boat. And I'm going to move the boat to do that. Okay, let's get started with this boat painting thing. Oh, and before I start, apologies for the last episode where the LED lights were just flickering like crazy. I think it's because now we've got the lining up, the lights bouncing off of it, and it was just just really bad, but I didn't know how to fix it. But I've had a few comments that have told me how to fix it. So hopefully, if I point it at the LED lights, but no flashing lights. Brilliant. Thanks everybody for the comments. Uh, that, that was seriously helpful but I guess needed for your end as well. So before we took uh, delivery of the boat and because the that delivery was running over winter um, we decided to have the boat undercoated with paint, primed and undercoated really. Um, the cost of doing a, a full paint job on the boat at the time was just uh, beyond our budget so uh, we kind of decided to do it ourselves it should be okay so the boat was done uh, with it was grip blasted completely grip blasted and then uh, two coats of uh, Jotomastic uh, Jotun Jotomastic 87 winter grade yeah, whatever that is down there. Um, and the winter grade apparently is, it's a bit more surface tolerant as an epoxy paint. So it, it, was, it was good and it's good for uh, below the water line as well. So the blacking really on the boat is that in black color and the top half is that in gray. Then on the top half, because we were going through winter, we put two coats of Jotun Penguard HB, which is a high build primer come under coat epoxy. So already it's had four coats of epoxy paint. Um, uh, below the gunnels, on top of the two coats of the uh, Jotmastic 87, we put a coat of uh, Jotun Hard Top HB, which is a high build uh, top coat not that suitable for below the water but uh, what the guys were saying was that the the jot mastic 
or any kind of epoxy blacking goes a bit grey over time so putting a top coat on it just keeps the visible parts uh, a good a good black colour so we took their, their their lead and went yeah okay fair enough so we are going to go now and put uh, the top coats on so we're going to put two probably three coats of epoxy top coat so for top coat we're going to go for Jotun Hardtop Smart Pack it's an epoxy paint but it's a mix of one to one and apparently according to the guys at the SML Paints apparently it's better for putting on with roller and brush whereas the uh, Hardtop AX which is the, the normal kind of one which is mixed to a ratio of four to one is better for spraying so we've gone with the one for rolling for obvious reasons we're going to be rolling it on and tipping it off i don't have a spray and we're so close to other boats um, as we've already experienced there's a fair bit of overspray in the wind uh, we're not in a polytunnel but before we do any painting we are just going to go through the boat uh, there's a few places that need touching up so come with me and I'll show you everything there's the boat all primed and ready and down there but as I was looking there are a few places that need a bit of bit of fixing and touching up before we go paint so like there it's just been catching probably just needs a bit of sanding down uh, mostly on seams I'll, I'll sand that back and put another wee touch of primer on it just to seal up those little bits of rust most of the issues are around the hinges uh, like oh where is it there so it just needs little little minor touch ups before we go and paint so like there and there so I need to go through and just check everything uh, like the tiller arm we completely forgot to paint the end of the tiller arm so I'll just I'll just wire brush that and take it back Oh, it's been out of the water now for six months and, and on hard standing for six months so it needs a darn good wash before we do anything and then I look at things like this and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to do this is the let's see if I can get the camera on that yeah. this is the drain hole for the stern deck and I asked them to paint inside and they did but not not very far up so it's got some rust and that rust it's just staining that so I'm kind of figuring out trying what to do with that I think I might put some rust converter in it and then a bit of paint but I need to figure that out because that, that that will just annoy me uh, over time that will just annoy me and it's the same with the other side and you can see the boat needs a, a darn good wash yeah filthy filthy windows disgusting and again you can see here the hinges just need a little bit of clean up now the other issue we had is we were uh, when we were checking out the paint and how we were going to put the coach lines on we used masking tape uh, and if you remember oh, well it, it was the hottest day or one of the hottest days of the year at the time and all the glue is now stuck so I need to go and get some glue remover and get shot of that there that, that seal needs done yeah so I need to spend some time doing that but overall it's not it's not too bad there's a couple of little scratches where ladders have been up 
Uh, they've made a little dent so I can touch them up. But the main thing that I need to work on is, uh, and it won't really show up on here, but right there is a poly tunnel, and that's where I'm going to put the boat to get painted. It's out of the, it's out of the wind, uh, it's out of most of the dust because the, the yard is pretty dusty. But so what happened was uh, somebody was in there painting with a sprayer and the overspray it's difficult to see on the window you might be able to see it a bit there yeah so the overspray went straight onto our boat and windows i was a bit annoyed with them they did they did eventually when i spoke to them about it they did try to clean it and then they they, they put a polythene sheet over the boat but they didn't really clean it well enough so I'm going to have to spend some time scraping the paint off the windows I'm not bothered about that there because that will just get sandy oh look boat's dirty um, and there's another little scratch that will need a little bit of sand and a touch up so there's nothing much to do there's a bit of a ding here not quite sure how that ding happened it looks like something hit it uh, bit of wire brush and that'll fix that so the Jotun pen guard has this side is absolutely fine uh, so these granny handles they sprayed it didn't really spray the other side so yeah so unfortunately I'm gonna have to sand the inside of the granny handles and yes I could go and complain to the boatyard but they're 200 miles away uh, it's just as easy just to sand it down myself and go on with it yeah there's a better shot you can see that round here they just didn't do it uh, so easy enough to fix just annoying that I have to and this side of the boat is absolutely fine. Most of the dust is and dirt is on the other side because that's where the, the path is and the crane works. But here there's absolutely, aside from a little wash, there's really not much to do at all. So I'm quite happy with that. Again, again, hinges hinges and rust. I don't think you're ever going to solve that, really. Yeah, just dirt. So before I paint, it needs a darn good wash. And I brought a brush to do it. I left it at home. <laughs> yeah, and here you can see the, the drain holes again. Just need they didn't really paint inside them. I did ask them to, but they didn't do it. This one's all right. A little bit of, little bit of rust there. But that, that pen guard stuff has, the high build has done, has done the boat well over winter. But before another winter comes in, we need to get it done. So jobs today, prep. That's scary. Right. Up on the roof. What? I'm just looking at the mushroom vents. I wonder if I need to take them off. I'd rather not, but I might have to. Yeah, I don't think they're sycophlexed and I don't think they're masticed. And it looks like uh, neoprene kind of spongy foam gasket of course there's there's gaps in it yep they're gonna have to come off aren't they okay I think so 
and there's no there's no little rust in any of the seams so mostly the little touch-ups are literally little touch-ups scary being on the roof let's get started on some of these touch-ups so i've got some wire brush things and some 240 grit for my multi-tool with a sander attachment now I will use the orbital sander later, but this is just for the wee touch-ups to get into the nooks and crannies. We'll see how it goes. That's come up well. Uh, I'll get some primer on it. Just a wee bit there. Now I've been trying 240 grit to flatten it. And I'm going to try 320. Uh, that looks a bit aggressive. It's quite easy to take that off back to steel. And that's what the recommendation was. Take it back to steel. Yeah, take it back to steel and then put the two pack on it. Uh, yeah, it came off way too quick, so we'll try 320. Uh, that's the touch-ups done, that bit was gouged out. Haven't done the hinges yet, I'll do them when I take the doors off. So now I'm just gonna clean them up with some degreaser and a tack cloth. And there's this little ding. So we'll clean that up and give a touch up of primer in just a just a bit. There wasn't much on the other side. Neighbour spot. Uh, oh yeah, down here. All the way down here. There we go. I put the ladders up. There's there's ladders for use here, but I didn't notice one of them was a bit yeah, rough. Really rough. So when I put it up, it gouged out the paint. Which was disappointing. Right. Still trying to think that what to do about them. What would be the best way to do that? What could I get in there? There's no way I'm going to get to sand it and get rid of that rust. There's just not a chance. Maybe a wee bit of it, but nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's going to get in there. What could I use? Bottle brush. Oh. Bottle brush. Let me, oh, wolf, let me try that. Yeah, so here's the, the rudder arm. That's pretty rusty. They never painted that. Uh, don't know if I can sand that back to steel. Right, so those are a bit sanded and cleaned up. Now I'm just going to degrease it and I'm using Jotin 17 thinner which is the thinner for the uh, epoxy paint but I'm told that it's a degreaser as well so we'll just give it a little wipe over with that and if you're interested I ordered a whole pile of lint free cloths basically cut up bed sheets off of eBay you can buy five kilogram pack which is hundreds uh, for very little money at all but they'll be handy because you can chuck them about. Delivery man was good with the tin. He said they didn't burst everywhere. That 
quite sure where to store this stuff. I'm kind of reluctant to store it on the boat. It's, it's unbelievably flammable. Yeah, I just decided to, it was only su surface, surface rust. It cleaned up very well. But just a wee dollop, dollop of degreaser on there. We'll clean that up. I'll just go around the, the edges. Right, I think I'm going to store it in the gas locker. This is a drain point in there. And it's not in the boat. It's got some air. I'm just being safe, really. Time for lunch. Okie dokie. Lunch over. Time to make some food. Right, so there's 100 grams of paint, that'll be 25 grams of hardener. There we go, just spooned in 25 grams of hardener, so that's 100 grams to 25 grams is a 4 to 1 mix. And now I'm just going to mix it. Oh, it needs about 2 minutes of mixing, it says. So, we'll just keep doing that. And I've got my favourite little touch-up brushes. Oh, let's go and do some touch-ups. Another bit done. It's actually drying really fast. And it's not that hot. It's quite a lot of moisture in the air. It's not going to rain. And yeah, it's dry super fast. Right. So, bottle brush. And it fits in there. So if I strap a big long pole to it, and give that a good old clean. Oh, oh well, that'll be another three grand. And then press treat it. Uh -huh. Awesome. Okay, next bit. That's not too bad. It wasn't. It wasn't bad at all. A couple of wee bits on the granny handles, uh, which needed touched up. A couple of little bits on edges around the place. But me being me, just wanted to get that done and and cleaned up. Thank goodness I didn't pay 80 pound for a big tin of paint for basically 100 milliliters of paint. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we've been talking a lot with my neighbor who's very kindly given me some of his Vactan uh, rust converter. So tomorrow I will try and pour some in those uh, gullies for the drain. Uh, the drainage gullies and see what it's like. So that's all the little touch-ups done. Job now is let's get this spray or overspray off my windows. I think this window took the brunt of it. So I'm going to sit with a scraper and just gently, very, very gently scrape off the paint. Luckily it's glass, so paint doesn't stick too well to glass. Seems to be coming off. Okay, you can hear it. Oh yeah, that's coming off. I can, straight away I can see it coming off without, doesn't seem to be scratching. Yeah. Just using a window scraper. Wow, that's an absolutely massive difference. Really hard to show up on the camera. But, I mean, apart from that being some dirt, you can see there's lots of flecks of paint on that. It just took a battering from the boat that was there. And the nose was out of the polytunnel and they just sprayed and the whole thing just went bang all over the front of my boat. Uh, uh, they kind of cleaned it up, but just needed a bit of extra effort. Well, that took a couple of hours, but my windows no longer look like 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> oh, that was hard up, down the ladders. Oh, dear. And I only fell off the ladders once, given my form with ladders. That's not too bad. So it's getting late now. It's about six o'clock, been a long day, uh, time to go home. Tomorrow, 
give the boat a wash. I'll remember to bring the brush tomorrow. And um, yeah, we'll do the second coat on the uh, primer stuff. Oh, that's disappointing. Woke up this morning to this. Uh. Typical. I picked this week because it said it was going to be dry all week. Now it's raining and overcast and it's going to be like that for the next three days. Uh, that means I can't finish the outside of the boat. I think the most annoying thing is that I've been waiting for three weeks for the, the welder on the boat yard to come and do some welding for me. I'll, I'll show you that later. But he was going to do it this morning and that's out. Just delay. Well, at least I remember to bring the washing brush. <laughs> but despite it raining, the guys are still doing the soldering. This is an anchor point that unfortunately the boat fitter forgot. So just before the heavens opened, the guys did the welding that I needed. So I've had this added. It's not the prettiest thing, but um, as I said before, we, even though there's a gasket in here, uh, that would need sealed up, but the rain was coming down through the um, sliding hatch and going straight onto it. So to give it a bit of a fighting chance, I decided to put a, a bracket on there. So the rain will hit it and at least come off. So that'll need all cleaned up and primed again. I was going to put my horn button in there, but the guy said that needs to come down. So I'll probably end up putting them here, I think. So this video has been quite long. Uh, I was doing the editing and I thought, oh, that's, that's quite long. Um, but at least I've shown you all the things that we're currently doing. So now it's just a case of uh, more coats of primer and just cracking on with it. So over the next couple of days, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Now it's a long weekend in the UK, so I might get some stuff done. I might not. It depends on what pub Roma drags me to. <laughs> So look, thank you for watching. Thanks for liking. Uh, and again, uh, the comments are great. I really, as you can see uh, from the LED things, I really do pay attention to the comments. So until next time.